Hey y'all, this is o one two boku coming at you with another movie review. And I know it's way past the holidays, way, way past the holidays. But I figured I would, um, <coughs> let us have something that would be tremendously good. Um, <coughs> sorry, my, my, if I cough a bit in this video, well, quite a bit. My allergies have been all over the place. I apologize for that, but, um, it's just how it is. But what I am going to do is I am going to do a, a holiday movie that I know I should have done around the springtime when it was more that holiday, but I watched it around Easter, and it's one of my favorite, like, Easter slash Good Friday movies, and it is, yeah, The Passion of the Christ, or Passion of the Christ, as I also call it too, but The Passion of the Christ. And it is a favorite movie of mine, and, uh, you know, while I am talking to you, I realize I did not get any of my usual stuff up. I am going to get that up right now. But it is a favorite movie of mine, and it is one where, you know, I loved how Mel Gibson was extremely bold. It was extremely bold in doing this movie. He, you know... It was a good one. I know some people. I know people gave him a lot of crap for what he uh, for what he was doing. And sadly, I also know that as well. You know, you have everything else uh, that just sort of happens. And yes, there's the controversy that involved the film. There's you know Mel Gibson's anti-Semitic comments, but it doesn't you know hurt my liking of this movie and I love uh, what the film you know came and did you know it was really good for what we had and I mean it, it really shows what Jesus uh, went through and holy crap <laughs> I'll tell you guys right now Fans like me and probably people of faith and or if you also just like, you know, if you want to take the faith out of it, if you like good storytelling of a man that you possibly believe wasn't Christ but a great pop prophet of Christ or, um, you know, was uh, um, just, uh, you, know, a, a, you know, a good engaging story, whether you believe it or not. Audiences, I mean, not to start this earlier, but audiences like this movie a hell of a lot more than the critics because holy crap I cannot wait to get into that because there is a telling telling marker with this stuff holy shit oh man I have an itchy ear uh, sorry no, no not the other one too god Ugh. Uh, my my ears itch probably because I have not had a why is this starting to... Give me a minute, guys. I gotta go blow my nose. I'm probably gonna edit this. Ugh. I am back. But, like, yes, I mean, like I said, this movie had, you know, just a lot of great stuff. I think it's a really good telling of Jesus Christ. The actors in it are really good. Mel Gibson wanting to have this movie done in traditional Aramaic... Um, there's a little bit of uh, Hebrew in here, not too much Hebrew, but there's a little bit of Hebrew. It's mostly Aramaic and Latin, but doing it in two and maybe three dead languages, I give him all the world for that, because that was bold during this time, and man, showing the, uh, probably very close to what the actual violence was during what Jesus Christ went through during this time. I mean, man, oh man, you know, the Passion of the Christ has it all. It, it is not a movie that pulls its punches. I mean, it pull that pulls its punches. It, it basically is like, bam, 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 in your face, let's go. You know, I mean, it's a movie that is worthy of cinema. And I mean, it's, it's funny because I know a lot of people know this movie, but I also know a lot of people, you know, I mean, it's sad because Passion of the Christ is one of those films that's just been like, you know, Fitted under the, for, the the forefront that people like probably don't remember mostly, but I mean I do because I remember my grandma took me to see this movie and it was uh, yeah 2004, so uh, I was about 
Jeez Louise, now I'm going to do the math on this. I'm sorry, guys. I know you're going to see this right now, but I am terrible with math. I am completely terrible with math. So give, give me a moment here. Let me calculate it here. Let's see. Okay, I was a lot older than I thought. I was uh, 18 years old when I saw this movie. So yeah, I was uh, I was 18 years old. So I was old enough to see this movie. My grandma really wanted to take me. I was uh, I was for it, and you know, I mean, it was a really good good film. And, and I admit, um, the creepy parts in this movie never made me want to do anything really that evil again. Now, uh, granted, speaking on a faith perspective. I still sin and do things I shouldn't throughout my daily life, like cussing and being bitter towards things and stuff like that, as you guys all know if you are a person like me, a person of faith. But hey, we all do it, you know, a lot of things can be forgiven by our Lord, and hey, hey. But, um, you know, it was a great movie, and this movie holds a lot in my heart, because I got to see it with my grandma, um... I love the film. It's a great film. I love what Mel Gibson did and the cast did. And hopefully somewhere down the line, I'll be able to show my parents this. Because I don't think my parents have ever seen this film. I want to show them this film. But I know they're not they're not one for violence and bad things like that. I realize if I was going to show my folks this film, I should have gotten this film a lot earlier when I did. Around the time they probably released it. And also just... um. You know, like, all the different things that this film entails, and it's just, you know, it's a great film, and I just hope I can show it to them one day, because I think my parents will definitely like the message that the film conveys. I mean, albeit the violence is going to be tough, and I admit, Passion of the Christ, like several other films, is still a movie that makes me bowl my eyes out a lot of times in the scene, and um, just to give you a heads up, one of the scenes that does it, I'll get into the cast in a moment, guys. One of the scenes that does it is when uh, um, Jesus is falling down in the crowd when they're whipping him and beating on him. And Mary's struggling to go to Jesus. And as she's remembering him as a kid when he's playing, he falls down on the ground and I guess he hurts himself. And Mary, you know, frantically just drops all her work and, you know, runs to her kid, hands out, just really worried. And... Oh, sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting sad just thinking about it. But she runs to him, hands out, and she says, I'm here. It's okay, I'm here. And she tells uh, Jesus this as well in current times. She's like, my boy, I'm here. I'm here for you. And uh, Jesus grabs, Mar or not grabs, but he touches Mary's face lightly. And he's like, uh, you see, Mother, I make all things new. And it's like, oh, God. And I'll just mention it right now, that great part of the score by John Debney. Holy shit, was John Debney's score great in this movie. Oh, man. And again, I'm sorry, just thinking about some of the scenes in this movie. I may get a wee bit emotional just recalling them, but um, I will uh, get to it. Um, <coughs> Let's see. We have uh, Jim Caviezel starting out, who became the centerpiece. And like Mel Gibson, really got attacked when this movie came out for playing Jesus Christ. But, um, like, uh, I forget the reason why in the special features that they wanted him. They said that, uh, it was also that, you know, Jim Caviezel had some nice, interesting features about him. He had a good stature to play Jesus. And, and um, like, Mel Gibson says they get a lot of people to play Jesus that is, uh, that are, you know, not well built or, you know, they're a little skinny and a little like, eh, like, small-like. But what he liked about Jim Caviezel was Jim Caviezel wasn't, you know, hugely, like, haha, muscular. But, um, you know, he, he's pretty dang well built in this film. And that's what Mel Gibson liked is Jim Caviezel was very well built. He, he learned the Aramaic lines and everything so good in this movie. He has a great presence on screen he does everything so well his suffering in the movie is so sad to see and you feel for him as jesus throughout this movie as it goes along and i think this movie is 
two hours and like one minute, but I think, yeah, yeah, yeah it's uh, two hours and uh, six minutes, 126 minutes. And, and what you get is like just a great performance from Jim Caviezel from start to finish, from his interaction at the beginning with, you know, being afraid because, you know, he knows what he has to do, but he's afraid to do it. And that's what I liked, how Mel Gibson showed Jesus' fear. Because we all knew that Jesus knew what he had to do, but he was still, in many ways, a man of great power, but he was still mortal. And I would agree that this concept of having to die for the world's sins would frighten him just a bit. He would still go through with it, but... You know, it's terrifying to know your own death, to know that this is not a fun ride, and he probably knew what he was going to go through, and he still accepted it, but it was just that the concept of that, and, and I think there's even a line that he says while Jesus, is, or Satan is trying to tempt Jesus, and, um, you know, Jesus says, you know, shelter me, O Lord, from the coming storm, you know, protect me, um, you know, it's like all those things, and, you know, it's just like, he goes through so much, and Jim Caviezel as an actor went through so much playing this character, like, you know, he got sick uh, during it, during all the things, and, you know, because it was windy and, you know, rainy, and, like, uh, I think they were in Italian town, I, I, I don't think it was Malta, I forget the name of the town, but they were, like, in, a, in an Italian town where they filmed the movie that was similar to Jerusalem. They used a lot of the original buildings. They used a lot of the outcroppings. They did build a lot of sets too. But he got sick pretty badly. He, uh, at the part where he falls down in the crap of the cross, where I told you about where Mary comes up to him and he says, see mother, I make all things new. He actually had the cross crush the back of his head. And Jim Caviezel said, you know, it's a mix of fake blood and my real blood, but that's why, you know, that's that scene works, but it's also terrible because I literally got my head crushed a little bit <coughs> by it. So, you know, that, that wasn't all a complete act because he said that one of the Roman soldiers were supposed to act like catching the cross, so it didn't really crush his head, but... Uh, the guy missed his cue for a few seconds, and that back part of the cross is like, you know... I mean, in slow motion, it doesn't look as bad. I mean, he's still cringe, but you gotta think, in fast motion, that's just like a, a wham like that, like, on the back of the head, and it's like, oh, God. And, like, probably another one of the big things that Jim Caviezel went through that was really bad in the movie is when he's on the cross of the crucifixion, he said, like, it, it, it was raining, and there were clouds, and he was up there because they were waiting for it to pass. And then all of a sudden he says on the ground, he sees everybody running for cover. And, J and Jim Caviezel says, this is it. I'm going to get struck by lightning. And then he says that the lightning bolt came, or like they said the lightning bolt came down, hit the cross or hit him. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, he said there was a bright, bright flash of right light. And I think he said he went unconscious for a few seconds. And then he like woke up. And they said that his hair looked like a Don King hairstyle and that he had smoke coming from his ears. And it's just like, man, oh man, the crap you went through filming this movie. I salute you, Jim Caviezel, because that ain't no, uh, that ain't no small task. But hey, hey, let's see here, moving on. Ah, uh, yes, uh, fans of this actress will be no stranger to her. I used to be, but I know now a little bit more of her work. But the Italian actress Monica Bellucci played uh, Mary Magdalene. And um, again, Mel Gibson said that when he saw Monica Bellucci, he saw Mary Magdalene. He wanted to have uh, you know, her play the part because there was an innocence about Monica Bellucci and a beauty that would send well to the film. And I agree. She, uh, she played Mary Magdalene well. You could see the... Um, the innocence in her, you can see the sadness. She, again, knew the Aramaic and everything so well. She had a, a great stature in the film. She's still very beautiful and uh, very sexy. And you see just how, you know, man, she's just, I mean, she's uh, a riot in some ways. And, I mean, she played the part of Mary Magdalene. Well, there's even a little scene in the beginning where we see uh, Mary Magdalene about to be stoned in the town square and Jesus saves her and we see where uh, Jesus embraces her um, before that uh, 
that thought process of Mary Magdalene continues. And, you know, it's just like she, she was a great spot in the film and she knew uh, exactly what to do and she definitely deserves a lot of credit because she was a really good Mary Magdalene. You could see the innocence, you could see the suffering, but yeah, you could see the strong power of her because the people who uh, see through this the most, uh, through what Jesus goes through, is I remember from the Bible, from the parts I did read, I've, I've not really read up this part of the Bible. I've, I've been lacking on my Bible reading. I really need to get back into it. But um, it's uh, Mary Magdalene, uh, Mother Mary, and uh, also uh, John. And, uh, you know, what they go through is just, it's a lot with them. And, you know, you believe everything that, you know, Monica Bellucci sells to it. And then we also have... Uh, Maya, Maya Morgenstern. Maya Morgenstern, I've never seen her in any other film, but uh, she uh, plays uh, Mother Mary, and she was a great role for it, and she really had the part down, and believe it or not, I didn't know this, I think she's a Romanian, from what uh, Mel Gibson said. She was from R Romania, and he saw a tape of her, that was 10 years ago, so I think, like I said, if it was a 10-year-old tape, if this movie was done in 2004, so a, a tape from 1994, and he's like, that's Mar that's Mother Mary, that is the, the Mother of Christ. I want, you know, Maya Morgenstern for this film, and then uh, uh, Mel Gibson's team is like saying, well, this is from 10 years ago, you don't know if you want it, and they said, you know, once Mel Gibson puts his mind to something, he wants it, and he would not be dissuaded. He's like, I want Maya Morgenstern as Mother Mary. And they got her, and she did a great job in the film. You could see the pain and the anguish that Mother Mary goes through. Maya Morgenstern played it beautifully. You just see how she suffers with her son in many ways, because she can't imagine what Jesus Christ is enduring, you know, like what she goes through and again there's an innocence about her there is also a great power um there's a part where when uh, jesus started to get whipped in the streets where she actually makes eye contact with satan and satan makes eye contact with her and it's just uh, a very very great and good scene there's also uh like just like Oh yeah, what was I going to say? I'm sorry. I really can't explain any more about Maya Morgan's story because I really don't know much about her, but, which I apologize for that. But um, apparently when she did uh, pa The Passion of the Christ, she was pregnant. And um, nobody knew it until one day, uh, like Mel Gibson said, she came waddling up to the set. And uh, Mel Gibson's like, you're pregnant? And, and she's like, uh-oh, busted. And Mel Gibson is like, yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> so, you know, it's just uh, one of those, like, interesting things that you can't tell. But, dang, if she was pregnant during that movie, she handled it very, very well. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, I definitely need a shower after this guy. No, man, my <coughs> hair is a greasy mess. Oy. Let's see. And then, finally, what they have on the main character uh, list for the back of here is that uh, you have Sergio uh, Rubini who I know is a famous Italian actor from a few American films. I don't remember the names of them, but he's in a few American films. I know him from several Italian films. I also can't remember the names of them from Italian classes. It's been years since I've been in my Italian classes, but he was in a few films there. I know him most notably for the uh, Count of Monte Cristo uh, French production that my friend... Uh, uh, that my friend... Uh, Gray Fox has, if you guys know Gray Fox from YouTube, that's his collection, and uh, he has that, and that was a very good show, and um, Sergio Rubini is also in here, and Sergio Rubini uh, looks like very weak and small and frail because he plays, uh, um, is it, it's either, it's either he play he plays, uh, yeah, oh yeah, I think it's I think it's Decimus he plays because Decimus is the uh, evil guy that's taunting Jesus on the cross who gets uh, his, who almost gets his eye pecked out by a bird because of his lack of faith or whatnot apparently. But um, uh, Decimus 
uh, like was the guy walking with him with the cross. He was one of the uh, three one of the other two prisoners executed alongside Jesus Christ who walks with them. And you don't really get to interact with uh, Sergio Rabidi's character Des Desmus uh, much until the end of the film. And to where like when Jesus is like suffering and praying to God, like Desmus tries to tell uh, Caiaphas of the Jewish priest that. You know, listen, he prays for you. Why aren't you paying attention? Um, and, you know, he's just seeing how people are treating Jesus. And, you know, like, uh, they're, like his main point in the film, before he's uh, ultimately killed off and everything starts going haywire when Jesus dies and the earthquake and all the stuff from uh, God's mighty teardrop that falls on the earth, as I look at it. I know some people may not think that's what it was. I... I agree with Mel Gibson that that's what it was because he, he even says in the film you may not get that scene where when Jesus dies and that water drop like falls everybody thinks you know like maybe that was a magical coincidence or like I think it was God's falling teardrop that shook the heavens and you know the earth because you know he was crying because his son died and sacrificed himself for humanity and, and all that stuff and uh, there was my dog Hawk if you saw him <laughs> right in the background there. And, um, like, the one part that I like that Sergio Rubini has is when, um, why like Jesus is still struggling to live and going through the torture that he's going through right, right alongside these two prisoners. Um, Decimus actually says, you know, we, we deserve this Decimus. We deserve to be here. Uh, Jesus, I've sinned and my punishment is just, I just... Oh, well, damn this movie sometimes. I'm getting emotional even from this scene. And it's like, let me, let me try one more time. He says, you know, like, I deserve this. My punishment is just. But, Lord, when you go to heaven, just remember me when you enter your kingdom. And he says, Amen. So be it. So be it is Aramaic and, you know, Hebrew and stuff for Amen. Not like what they said in Congress and all that crap. Ah, men and all women, too. I just want to drop that right now. I know you guys probably don't want me getting political on my uh, videos here, but I'm just going to say that was so stupid when that was said those several months ago. What what an idiot, whoever that was who said it. I forget who it was, but what an idiot. Ah, men and all women, too. Ah, men and so be it. In Hebrew and, and Aramaic and probably even Latin, you jerk. <laughs> oh, man. But he says... Amen, I say to you, uh, on this day, you know, Gasmas, you will be with me in paradise. And, oh, it was such a good scene because just, di or, or, or no, not Gasmas, Des Desmas, sorry, Desmas. He's Eddie's, and, you know, just that little saying in forgiveness and frailty from Desmas of a pure heart of a man who is a criminal and has sinned, Basically, Jesus is like, hey, man, you're going to be coming with me to heaven because you realize the error of your ways. You realize what it is to be just. So come with me. You don't have to endure hell. And that is such a great scene. I mean, for the little bit that Sergio Rubini was in this movie, he was great. I give him a lot of credit, too, even though it's a smaller role. Um, I know I mentioned it once before. Great, great score by John Debney. John Debney does... A very good score. It's um, indicative of all cultures, like you said. There's various cultural music played throughout. Like it's not one or the other. Or it's not just um, you know, to Christian to Christians or all these different things. It's like he almost says the music is a cultivation of life, which is what I can agree with. I can agree with. It's a cultivation of life that really sits well for the film, and you know. It was done so well. I got the score by John Debney. It is such a fantastic score. It really makes you feel like religious power. It really gets you into the mood of the movie, the, the heartfelt parts of the movie. It really does. What in the... Uh, one sec, guys. I have a friend uh, come over. He left his laptop here uh, last night, and he uh, wanted to just get it back, um, so gave it to him. So uh, sorry about all that... Um up there but he got what he needed now and you know ready to move on and um like my friend my friend wanted me to mention too and I'll make a mention because 
can't really remember where I was in my placing. Now, I know I was talking about John W's score, but I'm, like, there's a part where I think people say in the scene when Judas is <coughs> being tortured, the, act, the actor who wears Judas is possibly wearing a watch in the scene, and I know they also say as another trivia point that in some of the scenes with Jesus you can see cars going by on a road, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's like, Hey, hey, that, that's why we live for film has sticks like that. I swear that almost looks like there's a person in the window, but that is actually part of my couch. Uh, yeah, that's the part of the couch that I'm poking through because, yeah, the light is, like, blinding, and it's like, I know when I see that, it's not like that bad, but, yeah, it looks like part of the couch is poking through. But, yeah, I thought that was a person. But, um, you know, hey, hey. And, uh, I mean, overall, you know, we got this, uh, sense of just, you know, it's a great film, and, you know, I mean, the visual effects are great, the way that the film was made was great, the costume department was top-notch, really great costumes, I think some of the best uh, costume marketing uh, for a religious film in this movie, uh, save, uh, save number one, right behind it, I would say, is, uh, uh, the, the Nativity Story with uh, Keisha Castle Hughes and Oscar Isaacs, which I hope to uh, get to at some point in the future, because that's a good one I'd love to talk about. There's also, you know, just like, again, the fact that they did this movie in Aramaic and and, uh, let's see, yeah, Aramaic and Latin with some Hebrew in there. I mean, just great stuff. I can't believe that the actors had to learn it. And, like, how they said they went about it was they would see the actors that they could say the lines and say the Aramaic well. And then what they did was they tested out if the actors could act in the Aramaic and the actors and actresses could act in the Aramaic. And it was just, I mean, I know it probably had to be a rigoring process, but, man, the people that they found that could do it, just really, really well done really good stuff, and just, you know, awesome things. And my friend's Uber ride went through. I will have to uh, do that once I'm done with this. You know, it's just really well done stuff. You know, great things. Um, there's also, you know, great visual effects. Like, probably one of my visual effects is when the earthquake is happening from God's uh, tear drop falling down. And you see, like, the temple going nuts. And when they film the temple and the priest falling down, when the temple comes apart and splits in half it's like done in a great way to where they filmed it with uh two cameras going uh, opposite directions like at a diagonal line so it looks like uh like let's see like ah uh, yeah like 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 what or like like that like filmed like that going apart like that and what they used was they used the model so they put the cameras on either side of the model and when the model came apart it's like you saw the temple split in two and, and like he says it's only a, a five second scene but it's done so well and the effects are done really cool it looks really good so I gotta say you know top notch for a, a very quick and powerful earthquake that Mel Gibson does there's also a, probably one note that I like how they make a, in this movie that I like that I like to mention for one for well two characters Judas's suffering that we see in this movie is done really well like the scenes that you know Judas goes through and when we see Satan it's like it's subtle but it's creepy and subtle enough to <coughs> to be like when you see all the demonic and weird shit it just it creeps the hell out of me it, it still does as a grown man I mean of course once again I have been a believer of spirituality and faith all my life. So seeing that type of stuff always gets to me. But man, you know, like seeing like the demonic double of Judas or when Judas is like, you know, be suffering and he's starting to like fall apart. And when he's like beating on these kids that aren't leaving him alone, you know, we see one kid that starts hitting him and like he's got like jagged teeth and he's got like part of, he's got like this eye of his like turned inward, like, uh... And then um, the second kid like goes from looking like a kid to this old to this old man, and this the same actor I believe who played <coughs> who played the demonic baby 
that um, Satan holds while uh, Jesus is going through the uh, flag flagellation scene. And, you know, like, we see, like, for instance, you know, Judas getting chased. My friend uh, pointed this out to me when we were watching the movie. And he pointed out how that there were, tw there were 11 kids beating on Judas. So, in a way, the mirroring of the disciples being pissed with Judas, beating on him, like, how dare you betray, you know, our Lord and Savior, you know, we're going to make you suffer. And while, you know, Judas is, like, losing his mind as he's being beaten on by the kids, the kids disappear, and all you see are these flies buzzing around this dead donkey, and this dead donkey with the flies and the maggots coming out of it looks like, you know, like a weird big eye where part of the eye socket's been chewed out and the eye's like sticking out partly and it's all yellow and disgusting. Um, the mouth is like open it's here, check it out like that. Like that. And, um, you know, you just see that and, you, and I looked at it when I first saw it and like, that's not normal. That is not normal looking at all. And then people say, it's just like a dead animal and then all of a sudden you know Judas starts crying and he looks up and you see this tree and I know some people said Judas stabbed himself some experts say that he hung himself from a tree Mel Gibson set Mel Gibson went with the hanging instead of the stabbing and you know he had Judas hang himself and when you see when Judas hangs himself and his feet are just sort of rocking back and forth um, before we get the long shot of Judas hanging from the tree we get a close-up of the the donkey looking up from Judas's perspective and it's like the donkey's looking up at the tree like right at Judas with a sick sick devilish smile on its face so the dead donkey looks like it's smiling and more likely because it's Satan it probably was legitimately smiling and such a creepy freaking scene so creepy and also um in finalness what I could say is that uh to the characters as well the, the portrayal of Pilate, I like in this movie a lot, because I know a lot of movies and features and, and television movies, and they even did this in, in the other movie that focuses on the whole life of Jesus, which is still a good movie, but it's very romanticized, um, the Son of God. You know, Pilate is, is just like this jerk of a Roman who hates everybody and everything, and I mean, in this movie, Mel Gibson goes with a bit more of a human approach to Pontius Pilate, to where we get to see where he doesn't, I mean, like Pilate in general always, he doesn't like being in Jerusalem. He says he hates being at the outpost. He doesn't want there to be. And when Jesus gets arrested by Caiaphas and, and the public and the Jewish priests, you know, he realizes he's in the back of a corner. He doesn't know what to do. Um, he doesn't know what the real truth is, what he should do. So in a way, he's like... And he can't believe that these people are this bloodthirsty that they would crucify a man after, you know, he gets tortured, he gets flagellated, he gets um, a whole lot of other things, and Pilate can't get it. And then Pilate even asks uh, his wife, uh, Claudia, who, believe it or not, I think is played by Claudia uh, Guarini. Um, he asks her, you know, Claudia, what is truth? And uh, uh, Claudia says, my husband, you know, Pilate, you can't have the truth told to you. You have to see it. And he's like, how can I see it? You know, because I'll tell you what truth is, Claudia. Truth is, is that Caesar warned me twice. He warned me if I was to come back here, the blood would be mine next. That, you know, I would be the one to, be, to die. And, and I guess in historical events, I guess five, five years after Jesus' death, Pilate was still in Jerusalem and he was killed during a uh, a Jerusalem raid by the people trying to overthrow him. And, uh, you know, it's just like, damn, you know, he, he knew his own death was coming by the hands of Caesar. Probably God worked through Caesar or Caesar being a prophet in his own mind. But I still think God probably had some intervention in that personally, if you want my opinion. But hey, hey. <laughs> uh... And, you know, I just liked it because, you know, it treated Pilate as more human. I mean, yes, he still did the whole, I wash my hands of this, I absolve myself of this crime, even though he fully really couldn't do that. It shows Pilate as a more humanistic individual instead of just being this uncaring jackass. 
that everyone portrays him to be. Because for him, it's just like, I'm confused. I, I'm annoyed, I'm confused, I'm upset, but I don't know what to do. Because I don't know why they want this man's blood. I don't understand it. You know, I, I don't get it. You know, and uh, I, um, I forgot. I wonder if we have uh, who plays him. I know they have the, uh, the cast here. Let's see here. Uh... You gotta try to, you gotta try to see it. Let's see here. Um, oh wow, that's actually uh, actually brings everything. They don't even bring up who played. Uh, that's not the entire cast and crew. That is a lie. <laughs> That is a blatant lie. Let me. I want to see because I, I know I know it's a Hungarian actor who plays him. I want to see. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, and now that's sort of the glaring issue. I'm going to say with uh, Rotten Tomatoes is doesn't give you the full cast like Internet Movie Database does. Give me, give me a minute. I'm going to go there to get the whole cast and crew. Let's see here. Come on, come on. Well, and I just saw there, I guess they're going to do the resurrection of the Passion of the Christ in 2022. Sorry if you guys saw me uh, itching something down there. I apologize, you know. I'm not trying to, but it happens. So sorry if uh, it looks um gross. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, uh there it is. Uh, yes. Uh, her, it is uh, Christo uh, Shopov, who is a Hungarian actor who played pilot. But uh, in the movie, he's known as uh, Christo Namov Shopov for his full name. But uh, Christo uh, Shopov and. You know, he just played pilot so well. And now we'll uh, get to it. Um, it'll, this this video will probably be a lot shorter because I know it almost has me as an hour, but um, I know it'll be a little shorter because like, like, uh, I know I'll edit it out, but there was this long pause that I was away from the from the thing because like I said, I had to help my friend at home You know, after leaving his laptop here. So uh, I will uh, help you guys out here in the moment that I have to get it done so I will try to get through these as quick as I can but like I said um oh god the critic consensus geez louise but here's what a uh, Rotten Tomatoes had to say this is this is their uh main thing it is 49% by critics 80% by audiences so like I said that is a telling score how the audience Love this film <coughs> a lot more than the critics did, which is not surprising. The critics loved to shit on this movie, totally, totally, totally. Um, you know, it's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh boy, and, and let's get to the critic consensus because it's a rotten one. And let me quote from Rotten Tomatoes here. Director Mel Gibson's zeal is unmistakable, but the passion of the Christ will leave viewers emotionally drained rather than spiritually uplifted. Now, that is not a lie. You can be emotionally drained, but emotionally draining is not a bad thing. Because you feel bad for what the man goes through, but you can still feel good at the end of the movie for what he for what he is I mean holy crap you, you guys probably the, the critics probably say that about every religious movie that there's ever been always oh, emotionally draining or oh it's heavy-handed da, 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 da. um what else is new guys what else is new I mean uh, you know I uh, I don't know I don't know what the hell you guys want that's weird. All right, let's get to some 
critics here with some, read some of this stuff. Uh, there is a few uh, positives. I will do um, I will do this little bit. Uh, well, hold on here. Well, uh, there we go. I will do these little bits. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll do eight. Uh, <laughs> or, or, or you know what? I'll, I'll do. Let's see, because there's two positive, and uh, there's four. Because uh, yeah, I, I don't want to do it. There's there's two positive, and there's so I'll do six, six of them. Because four plus two is six. So I'll, I'll do all the rotten ones first. Uh, this this is a. Uh, this is a, um, like, probably one of the most, uh, recent ones from, uh, January 9th, uh, 2018, from Will Self of the London Evening Standard, and I quote, If I believed in life eternal with access to a heavenly, uh, to a heavenly multiplex, I still wouldn't advise you to see this film. But as things stand, if thou ghost anywhere this week, be it to see a honest to piece of Graven image, imagery, not religious rubbish. Well, there, and I am going to be mean for some of these com these comments because I am a religious person, and I apologize if this is wrong, and I apologize if I get this wrong about your real self. And if you want me to expect your uh, opinion, I will say, uh, and I'm sorry for my friends who don't believe, but I mean, you know, it's like. If you can't take a movie for what it is and take yourself out of it, because I've seen many movies deal with science and religion, and I've not been emotionally, religiously charged at any movie to doubt the things, but if you can't even take yourself out a little bit, I'm going to say, Will Self, you are a straight-up atheist. Because <laughs> holy crap, you know? Um, I mean, you are welcome to this opinion, but wow. Well, I hope... All these um, negatives are not just um, negative against religion. Or I, I have a feeling they're going to be because I'm sort of peeking at some of these other ones. But um, you know, hey, oh uh, boy, boy, boy. Let's see here. The next uh, negative one is uh, a rotten one. Is uh, from March 5th of 2008 from Jonathan Rosenbaum, uh, the Chicago reader. Oh boy, Chicago. Uh, when Chicago newspapers get at something, oh dear God, heaven blows. <laughs> uh, I guess literally and figuratively in this point. Um, in this point of the review. Um, if I were a Christian, I'd be appalled to have this primitive and pornographic bloodbath presumed to speak for me. It's what he went through. Okay, he was just whipped with fig leaves and, like, little bits of toilet paper and just had poo thrown at him. Oh, my God. And this from the people who were not bothered by, like, for the critics who were so with Game of Thrones, and yet, you know, the fans complained more about the dick and ass and torture and the bloodbath than we had in Game of Thrones the fucking critics did. Oh my god, you know, uh, believe me, I know there are movies that do gore for gore, folks, I get it, but holy shit, uh, you want pornographic torture and gore, that's hostile, that is fucking hostile to a T, oh my god, or that's uh, Human Centipede. For crying out loud. Oh, my God. Oh, jeez. You know, you know, I will say Passion of the Christ is bad, but I'll give you guys a hint. If there's a film that disturbs me, that, is, that has a spiritual and religious significance to it, that is a film about purgatory, watch Eraserhead. That film is still disturbing to me, and I've already seen that film... Twice, two, three times, and it's still a mind fuck to me. It's a good film, but it's still a mind fuck. Uh, uh, Jonathan Rosenbaum, holy shit! Oh my god, you know I, I'm sorry if I'm gonna piss people off with this video, but I mean, uh, 
That's like saying, you know, uh, like, um, like, you know, uh, uh, I, I'm not going to say it, because I know that one, that one will take me way over the edge. Holy shit, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> All right, um, the fourth, or the third negative comment, rotten. Uh, let's see, from February 9th, uh, 2006, from Wally Hammond of Time Out, a negative and spiritually underwhelming experience. I, I don't know where you get the negativity from, but okay. Uh, I don't know where you get the underwhelmingness from, but okay. Uh, man, a lot of you guys must be devoid of emotion. <laughs> a lot of you must be devoid of emotion. Holy crap. Holy crap, man. Oh, this is the last rotten comment I'm going to read. Uh, from May 4th, uh, 2005, from Nick uh, uh, Shager, from Lessons of Darkness. And, uh, this is a funny one. I love this. Sick. <laughs> oh, that proves you don't like violence. Where is, uh, where is, um, I'm gonna quote, uh, I'm gonna quote, uh, like, the film, um, Lemony Snicket's in a series of unfortunate events, uh, with what Jude Law says. Uh, this is not going to be a film about a happy elf. This will be a film about religious and religious and terrible experiences that Jesus Christ went through to die for our sins. If you want to go see a film about a happy little elf, exit the theater and go to state and go to and go to room two where that film is showing. There's still much time to go see the film about the happy little elf. <laughs> Holy crap, alright, let's get to um let's get to uh the, the two positive here. Let's see. Uh, the um, Fresh Review uh, from uh, December 28th, 8th of 2010 from Nell Minow of Common Sense Media. Uh, she quotes, uh, extremely violent and powerful for mature teens. I'd say for anyone who can handle films all around and handle the violence of the film... Uh, I mean, Grant, I know the violence isn't for everybody, but, you know, I mean, I, uh, I mean, for, for anyone who can handle it, I wouldn't say just teams. Um, I, I love how, again, we're focusing on the violence. Uh, the, it, it, it wasn't just a violent film for the sake of being violent. It's probably what near damn well happened. Oh my God! It's like it's like yeah, Mel Gibson loves to make war. Hey, look, here's Braveheart over here. Hey, here's uh, the Patriot over here. Hey, here's uh, you know everything else he did. Oh look, lethal weapon! <laughs> violence, violence, the glorious, glorious violence. <laughs> That's what I. Oh my god, movie critics, holy crap, uh, th this is why I, I thank my friends say, you know, uh, which I'm glad they've now told me, this is why we gotta stop listening to some movie critics, holy shit. <sighs> oh boy, woo -hoo. all right, <laughs> let's see, the other, um, the last positive comment from Ian Nathan of Empire Magazine from April 1st of 2006 quotes, uh, a tormented movie ab about a tormented movie about torment, loopy, overreaching, and occasionally suspicious. Uh, simultaneously, it is daring. It is a daring artistic endeavor. Right. I'm glad you liked it, buddy. But what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I love how everybody says, oh, Mel Gibson is over reaching his grasp. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Oh, boy. Uh, you know, it's... This is exactly why I also want to get Kevin Smith's picture Dogma, because he went through the same shit with this crap uh, and Dogma, and that was a comedy based on religion, and, um, 
I mean, hell, the, the life of Brian got attacked by both people of religion and non-religion. It, it, oh, man, I, I, I tell you. We have just, we always keep just removing ourselves from the norm. And it, you know, as much as I would like to say this stuff didn't happen in the past, the more bold you are in doing something, the more you're going to get the life sucked out of you. The more you stick with the status quo in films, no matter what the era, era the more you, you know, apparently get everything you need. Woohoo! Stick with the status quo. Stick with what Hollywood wants. Money, sex, and revenge. Hi, 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 hi. Or whatever the fuck they're into now. You know, hey, how many zombie fucking films can we make now? Hey, how many more Game of Thrones things can we make to piss off the fans but not sticking to the story? And hey, hey, hey. Yo, know, what would make me laugh is if I, if, is if I, whenever I do finally get Braveheart and I do a review on Braveheart, if I read Braveheart's comments and people give Braveheart 100% reviews and it's like, so, you know, it does a true movie on Scotland and Braveheart, which is as violent as uh, this movie. I mean, maybe not as violent in certain standards, but it's still a rated R movie that deals with a lot of war and violence. And yet people say they love it. You get to Passion of the Christ and then it's like, oh, because we're not religious or this. Overreaching garbage. Hoi, 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 hoi. I don't know, guys. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I am passionate about the passion. <laughs> uh, so, be I mean, again, these folks are welcome to their opinions. And I'm, I'm great that we have them. But, man, you know, I, I really think people forget what movies are about. I really do think they have forgotten what movies are about. So, oh man, oh man, that is interesting times and interesting things. Okay, well, this is it for The Passion of the Christ. What do you guys think? Is this a movie that you guys like? Um, I mean, if you're not religious, have you ever given it a thought? Did you enjoy it for what it was? If you are religious, you know, are you as and, and do it as I am, you know, just leave a comment down below. If you want to attack me for this movie and for this review, uh, leave a comment down below. I don't mind at all. I will just take it with the, my positivity and skepticism. And hey, I mean, your comments are welcome, no matter how blatant or scathing or bad they can be. And hey, if you're awesome and into this movie, thumbs up. Great. Awesome. You know, because you can like the movie for anything. But I just love how people say, oh, it's a cheesy, gory mess. Okay, I can't wait to do the review on Apocalypto when I get there. <laughs> oh boy, I can't wait to see Apocalypto and what people thought about that. Man, I never really um, did pay attention to a lot of Rotten Tomatoes, but it is very insightful for what people uh, think. So, I mean, like I said, I'm going to have to go back to even the movies I've already done on here and look at the reviews and see what people think because I cannot wait to get to comments to see what people uh thought about the, that film or like certain TV shows that I have or um, such but uh, you know um, just like I said no matter what leave a comment down below if you want I'd love to hear from you guys and see if you think if you like this movie or not um, Passion of the Christ because I liked it so much uh, 10 out of 10 you know great film great effects uh, great telling of the story of what Jesus Christ threw uh, went through in his suffering. Oh, and that's another thing. Uh, how Martin Scorsese probably got. I think. I think uh, if I remember, I I haven't seen the film, but uh, but I know he. I never knew he did it. But um, the Last Temptation of the Christ. I think he got nailed to the wall for that movie as well. So hey hey, and look what happened when the History Channel did. I mean, like I said, Son of God, and uh, when they did the show the Bible. So when they did the show the Bible, and also made the movie Son of God. You know, the History Channel and the people who did that, they got their asses uh, nailed to the wall. And I, I remember that, too, because people were like, how dare you? It's like, you know, ooh, ooh, controversy, religion. <laughs> you know, it's, um, uh, it's funny to me. It's funny to me. Yeah, uh, funny indeed. But yeah, just leave a comment down below, and I appreciate anything you guys do, because I know like, stuff like this will be a tough subject. I've got a few other films, like I said, I want to do. I have a new uh, film where, uh, I forgot the title of it, but it's where Jesus is in the desert, and both Jesus and the devil are played by Ewan McGregor for Jesus' time there. I have, um, uh... 
the Nativity Story, which I would love to do a review of, and I also have Son of God. So, man, I cannot wait to get to those and see what people thought. Oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> but yeah, just leave a comment down below again. I know I've repeated that many times. I apologize. But yeah, just would love to hear from you guys on it. But uh, just let me know what you think. And have a good day. Deuces, guys. But remember... Regardless of our affiliations, political and religion and whatnot, I am sorry for the crowd that likes them. But I must say, once again, with absolute power and clarity. Fuck Joe Biden. Fuck Jen Psaki. Fuck Nancy Pelosi. Fuck Vice President Kamala Harris. Fuck most of fucking Congress right in the ass. Here's your $15 up your ass, Biden. You have a good fucking day, you old fucking fuck. Sorry, it was a long one. I am really pissed off at you guys this week. You guys can fucking go suck what's left of my left nut. So, there you go. Fuck you guys. Fuck the establishment right up the ass. So that's basically the whole thing. I know it said fuck you to other people, but fuck the goddamn establishment right in the ass. Your family affordable care plan can go straight to hell. Along with your $15 an hour and everything else. Fuck the establishment. Well, you know, let me end, let me end it like uh, that one uh, that one scene from uh, from Dust Till Dawn. I'll I'll try to be the vampire. I know I'm gonna make this terrible, but oh god! Fuck! Fuck you, United States Congress! Good night.